Tell me if this sounds familiar. You turned on a TV show, or a movie, or cracked open a book, or booted up a video game. And the plot kicks off with some big question about the main character's circumstances that hooks you right away. The story introduced this huge question, so you have to keep going to see what the answer is. But as you keep going, and learn more about the characters, and the plot, and the world, more and more questions keep popping up. For every mystery solved, two or three more pop up in its place. The plot keeps moving along, and you continue on, hoping for resolution to all these ever-branching plot lines. But the story only grows more and more complex, as you struggle to even keep track of what you've been told and what still needs solving, until you're taking notes and putting up poster boards and red yarn so you can piece together everything you know, and your brain feels like it's about to explode and you just wish somebody could come in and explain what's going on! If that sounds familiar, then you have experienced a mystery box story. It's a genre of storytelling that has become a lot more prevalent in the last few decades. What does that term mean? The most concise definition I've come up with, and the one that I use in all of my videos, is a story with a plot primarily driven forward by a slow unraveling of complex and interconnected mysteries. I've dedicated a solid chunk of my YouTube career to exploring what a mystery box story is, and what separates a good mystery box story from a bad one, as well as explaining all the convoluted lore of the most popular examples. Over time, I've collected a lot of information on how this genre works, and now it's time for me to gather it all in one place. If you resonated with the description I gave earlier, then keep watching, because I'm going to break down what makes expanded mysteries like this work, and what makes them not work. Because if you're like me, and you really like this sort of thing, it's worthwhile to explore why you like it so much, and find out how to seek out other similar stories that do it just as well, or better. So, let's break down what makes a mystery box story a mystery box story. I've actually made this video before, it was one of my first ever videos, but given how foundational this concept is to my channel, I thought it was worth redoing. After years of talking about this, I have more to say and better ways to say it. Let's get the basics done first. What is a mystery box story? Also called a puzzle box story. TV Tropes calls it a jigsaw puzzle plot. And I say mystery box story, but the phrase you'll hear more often online is mystery box show, because it's most common in TV. A mystery box story is different from a standard mystery like a whodunit. In a whodunit, there's one major mystery to be solved that's relatively uncomplicated and easy to follow, with a final reveal at the end that puts together all the pieces laid out, which the audience could potentially solve on their own ahead of time if they put in the work. A mystery box story is much larger and more complicated. It typically opens with some kind of big question that hooks the audience and gets them wanting to know more about these characters and the world. From there, the plot goes tearing off in all different directions, following different characters, different questions, that don't even seem to be related to each other at first. The story gets bigger and bigger as more questions are raised and answered. The plots tend to incorporate sci-fi and fantasy elements because keeping key elements of how the world works a secret adds another layer of complexity. Pretty soon, the questions the audience is asking encompass huge global conspiracies, supernatural laws, and the nature of reality. Until finally, hopefully, all the lore comes together in the end and the audience gets a roughly complete picture of what's been going on this whole time. Although the really good ones usually take more than one pass before you really understand it. Basically, if you Google it, and it autofills the word explained, it's probably a mystery box story. If you still don't get what I'm talking about, let me try to give you what the vibe of a mystery box story tends to be. They tend to go like this. Whoa! I don't know what I just stumbled into, but I suddenly found myself surrounded by weird stuff I don't understand. I have these weird powers I never used to have, I found this artifact with a really specific symbol on it that I don't know what it means, and I think there are people in the shadows watching everything I do. Oh hey! Weird stuff's been happening to me, too. Different, unrelated weird stuff. Huh, cool. Hey, wait a minute. That symbol. It's the same symbol that's on my thingy. Do you think it's possible that all this is connected? This is only the beginning. Whoa, who are you? I can answer all your questions, but instead of explaining anything, I'm going to pop in every once in a while and say something cryptic before disappearing. <laughs> I'm the bad guy, and my plan is coming together. Let me talk about it in the vaguest terms possible, but then right at the end, I'll make a reference to one thing the good guys have seen before, so you know my plan is connected to them in some way, but you don't know how. I found this old video. Let's watch it. Something bad happened back in the past. It's really important that I tell you that this symbol, which means I found out there's a group of people with the same powers as me, but where did we get all these powers? 
And what is this secret organization want with me? And why do the mystery guy and the bad guy keep acting like they used to be friends but now they hate each other? And how did Joe lose his eye? And what's Squeaky Pete keeping inside his locked treasure chest? And why is King Dragon trying to steal exactly 37 prism seeds for the strudel dimension? Hold on. I need to write all this down. Yeah, now we're cooking. You need to stop investigating. You don't know the forces you're tampering with. But I want answers. No, just stay away. Flashback, flashback, flashback. We're a bunch of characters who are old in the present, but this is the past when we're young. This is that big event we all keep hinting at in the present. This is the only way to save everything. No, it's too risky. You can't. Ah! ah! Ow, my eye. We've attained enlightenment and a new understanding of the nature of our reality. It's time to ascend to another plane of existence and kick your butt. No! Yeah, pretty much like that. Maybe the definitive mystery box story is lost. It starts with a bunch of plane crash survivors on an island, but this island has some weird stuff going on. There's a monster made of smoke flying around. One of the survivors is a kid with supernatural powers. There are other people living on the island who keep messing with the main characters for unknown reasons. And there's a hatch in the ground that won't open. As the show goes on, those mysteries expand and connect to each other. They open the hatch and find a guy inside. Why was the guy inside? Because he has to put this code into a computer over and over to stop the world from ending. Why does he have to do that? And why is the code he's using the same set of numbers that keeps popping up everywhere? And who built this hatch in the first place? And why does one character keep seeing his dead dad walking around? And why are there polar bears? And why do the other people on the island keep kidnapping kids? And what is this island? And on and on and on. To the point where these unanswered questions are the main reason a lot of people kept watching. That's the experience of a mystery box story. It's one part narrative and one part puzzle. It drops you in and lets you be totally confused and then feeds you a slow drip of information as it goes, challenging you to keep track of all the information you've been given so that you have to work pretty hard just to understand what's even happening. Why would anybody be into that? Well, for some, the exercise of finding all those puzzle pieces and fitting them together is fun and satisfying. It can also be really fun to go online and talk to other fans while the story is running to compare notes and swap theories about where the story is heading. But that's a minority of people. Most people don't want their TV and movies to make them take notes and give them homework. Most people find themselves hooked on a mystery box story just because they want to see the answer to the mystery. Humans hate leaving stories unfinished and questions unanswered. So a pretty surefire way to keep an audience engaged is to keep giving them questions to chew on so they keep coming back to find out more. As a genre, the mystery box story is pretty new. Some older media might play with ideas like this, but the past decade and a half has seen an exponential rise, mostly in TV shows. In the 21st century, TV became a lot more serialized instead of relying on standalone episodes. Back in the day, it was really hard to watch an entire TV show in order. But now, the rise of streaming has made it easier than ever to binge shows from start to finish, so more studios started leaning into detailed plotlines that wove through the entire show. Combine that with the internet, where fans could pool their resources and dissect each episode as it came out, and it was the perfect recipe for stories that made the audience work. It turns out that the world is full of bored nerds who love TV shows that they can study like homework. You want the answers? Then you'll have to dig. There is a negative side to all of this, though. Some mystery box stories can be really great with introducing and resolving their central questions in a satisfying way. But more often than not, they screw it up in some way. And now is as good a time as any to bring up the elephant in the room, where mystery box story got its name. In 2007, J.J. Abrams gave a TED talk called The Mystery Box, where he explained his writing philosophy. He uses the metaphor of a mystery box full of close-up magic stuff that he bought as a kid, and he explains how he's never opened this box because the mystery of what's inside is more compelling than actually seeing what's inside. It represents infinite possibility. When I started to think that maybe there are times when mystery is more important than knowledge, I started getting interested in this. He asserts that mystery is the main driving force behind all stories, that audiences follow stories because they want to find out what happens next. Therefore, according to him, a good story is one that's full of mystery, that introduces questions for the audience to wonder about. That means the actual answers don't even matter, because the anticipation of answers is where the enjoyment comes from. Almost all the best-known mystery box stories out there have J.J. Abrams' hand in them somewhere, as a producer, writer, or director. He was the creator of Lost, even if he only worked on the first season. And I've talked about projects tied to him so many times on this channel. And yeah, you can see that philosophy in action on almost everything he's ever made. He opens his stories with these big questions that get you wanting to know more, 
string you along for the entire runtime, and then end with either no answers or really flimsy, unsatisfying answers. This comes from Abrams starting a story and introducing mysteries without figuring out in advance what the answers are. They found a hatch in the ground. They spent, they, but they have, they can't open it. They spend the whole season like trying to open this thing up, and he's like, and then finally in the season finale, they open this thing up, and I'm like, what's in there? And he's like, I don't, I don't know. J.J. Abrams is attached to this project. It doesn't have to make sense. J.J. Abrams is half right. Yes, mysteries are a great way to get the audience invested. And the journey is more fun than the destination. But that doesn't mean the answers don't matter. When you introduce a mystery in a story, that's an implicit promise that it will be solved later. You need to have a real answer. This business of making up questions and then figuring out the answers later is a terrible way to write a story. Even if people get enjoyment out of wondering about the mystery while the story is running, all that enjoyment turns into betrayal and disappointment when they find out there were no answers. Yeah, I have no idea who the killer is. Oh, great. Me neither. <laughs> Even though J.J. Abrams isn't the only person writing mystery box stories, the term mystery box is closely tied to him since he coined the term. As a result, there's a sort of competing definition of mystery box story that's basically a story that introduces a bunch of mysteries it never plans on solving. So a lot of the discourse around mystery boxes, not that there is much, can be pretty negative. Part of what I'm trying to do here is get the word out that J.J. Abrams doesn't own the concept of mystery box stories. There are other writers and directors doing a much better job at creating complex questions that have satisfying answers. I can't tell you how many conversations about mystery boxes that I've tried to have with people where they're like, you mean that stupid thing J.J. Abrams always likes to do? Why would you ever give that the time of day? Because I'm stuck using his term, it's so hard to articulate that, no, I think J.J. Abrams is an idiot who occasionally gets lucky. I'm talking about a much larger phenomenon that his term got attached to. Even outside of Abrams though, a lot of mystery box stories miss the mark. It takes a lot of work and planning to pull off a good one. But beyond that, because this is such a new genre and not a well-known concept, there are a lot of writers out there who are figuring out how to write one on their own, or by accident. I've seen so many mystery box stories made by people who clearly have never heard of a mystery box story. I've seen shows where the writers introduce complex and mysterious lore, seemingly with no idea that the audience would now expect explanation for that lore. They might introduce an ongoing mystery almost as an afterthought to build intrigue, but the mystery soon fizzles out as the story moves to focus on other stuff. Or they do put a lot of focus on the mystery, but they fail to organize and plan ahead, so the mystery ends up as a giant mess. Every time I see any of these, I end up thinking to myself that if only they had seen this other TV show and learned from their mistakes, this could have been so much better. To that end, I've created 10 criteria for making a good mystery box story. These 10 criteria are how I judge all the mystery box stories I talk about on this channel. Here's what makes a mystery box story fun, engaging, and satisfying to solve. And if a mystery box story sucks, it's probably missing one or more of these things. Number one, you have to start with a big mystery. It's like I keep saying, the mystery is the hook that draws the audience in. A mystery box story needs to start with a big question to establish the story and tone going forward. This question might take the entire story to resolve, or it gets answered partway through, only to give way to another related question. So going back to Lost as an example again, the mystery introduced in the pilot episode is this smoke monster, and more generally, what's the deal with this island? Guys, where are we? That ends up being the thing that drives the entire plot straight through to the finale. That said, it's not impossible to make a mystery box story where the mysteries don't show up until later. A series of unfortunate events doesn't have any real mysteries at first, at least in the books. The mysteries of the organization VFD aren't brought up until book 5. Number 2. The story needs to have more than one mystery. Again, this is what separates the mystery box from the traditional whodunit. After the initial question is introduced, there needs to be a whole spread of other questions running in parallel. For example, the Maze Runner series dumps Thomas into this weird sci-fi world with tons of stuff that isn't explained at first. Who put Thomas and all the other kids in the maze? What's the point of the maze? What are the grievers? Why do all the kids have amnesia when they first show up? And why does Thomas have flashes of memory about Teresa? And for a story that doesn't really do this, there is WandaVision. The show opens with the mystery of where Wanda is and how she got there. But all the mysterious things in the story are still part of that single central question of what this place is. As soon as that question is explained a few episodes in, there isn't much more mystery left. Number three, the mysteries need to be connected to each other. Towards the beginning, there should be multiple plotlines that might seem unrelated, but sooner or later, all these questions should prove to be intertwined. They're all different schemes of the same secret organization, or caused by the same supernatural force. Dark gives us lots of plot threads that seem unrelated, 
But through the introduction of time travel, we're shown that every event in the story was either the cause or the effect of something else we've seen. They even call it the Knot in Universe. For an example that doesn't do this, there's the Owl House, which I wouldn't even really consider a mystery box story anyway. The Owl House has a few mysteries that unfold across multiple episodes, but they aren't interrelated. The mystery of how Ida got cursed and the mystery of what Emperor Bellus's plans are have nothing to do with each other. Oh, and with that, I should say that if a story doesn't do one of these things, that doesn't make it bad or poorly written. It just means that it doesn't conform to the genre expectations of a mystery box story. Plenty of the stories I've talked about aren't really true mystery box stories, they just have some mystery box elements. Since this is such a new genre, there are a lot of edge cases that just kind of flirt with these concepts. Number 4. The audience needs to be told that these plot points are mysteries. Just because the story throws in a bunch of weird unexplained things in the mix, doesn't mean the audience is going to be curious about them. In certain genres, you're expected to just roll with things you don't understand. A story needs to teach its audience how to engage with it. A mystery box story needs to telegraph to the audience that this is something you're supposed to wonder about. This usually takes the form of a character in the story openly wondering about it. Like the gang in Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated asking out loud who Mr. E is. It's from Mr. E. There are more mysteries to come. This is only one piece of the puzzle. Puzzle? What's that supposed to mean? It doesn't have to be that explicit though. Sometimes all it takes is the right framing and emotional cues to communicate that feeling of, ooh, mysterious. When a mystery box story doesn't do this, you get Over the Garden Wall. For most of the series, you assume that this world is just a loosey-goosey, Alice in Wonderland-style fantasy world. It's not until the end that you learn that there's a reason why Wirt and Greg are here. Number 5. A mystery box story has to be long. The whole fun of these things is to keep track of all the complicated plot threads over time, speculating with the people around you about where the story is heading. You can't do that with a single short installment. A mystery box show doesn't really function as a mystery box unless it's at least several seasons long, like Alias. Sometimes a mystery box plotline can be squeezed into something like a movie, like Memento, but it's not the same viewing experience. Number 6. A mystery box story needs to spread out its mystery. It shouldn't explain all its mysteries partway through, or go several installments without mentioning the mysteries. The plot needs to have mystery in it from beginning to end. That sense of curiosity needs to feel ever-present. And there needs to be a steady enough stream of new information, punctuated by big, impactful reveals, so the audience is continually rewarded. The first season of 1899 was great at this, setting up a bunch of separate plotlines that slowly come together and get explained bit by bit, until the finale drops a bombshell reveal that explains most of what we were wondering about, and simultaneously raising a whole bunch of new questions for next season. It would have been so good, and I'm still mad they cancelled it. Sometimes a mystery box story will start off strong, but then partway through, it'll explain too much and run out of mystery. Usually a TV show will do this at the end of a season. Like in Attack on Titan, at the end of the third season, Eren uncovers his dad's notes that basically explain all the lore that hadn't been explained yet. There were no more questions going into the final season. The final season did introduce some smaller new questions, but that's not the same. It's not a continuous unbroken streak of curiosity. This is something that can be tricky to pull off. If you don't set up enough questions early in the story, or if you didn't plan too far in advance, it's easy to run out. And even if you do intentionally build a complex web of mysteries, you can blow through all the answers quicker than you expect. The plot needs to be constructed in a way that lets you reveal little bits of information at a time. That's why almost every mystery box story has a character who knows all the answers but won't reveal what information they know because of reasons. Someone who can be cagey about what they know so the writers can use them to control the flow of information. A good question for another time. Another really common trope in these things is for a character to almost discover a big secret, but then get interrupted right before. It's all about making sure the mystery lasts. If only people knew the truth, that hidden behind this vending machine, I secretly have Boring. a- Number 7. The mysteries need to have diegetic answers. Okay, heads up, fancy sounding literary term here. But diegetic basically just means in-universe. In a mystery box story, Everything should have an explanation that fits within the bounds of the story's world. Some works of fiction aren't meant to be read literally. There will be mysterious and unexplained events in them, but they're meant to be read as symbolic or metaphorical. The audience isn't meant to be able to solve the lore because there is no lore. It isn't meant to make literal sense. Think The Last Shot of The Shining. There's no answer to how this photo was taken. It's just meant to be a weird twist to make you think. A mystery box story can't do this. If you're telling your audience that there is a mystery that they should try and solve, then the story needs to take place in a world with clear parameters and rules. You can't be throwing around trippy symbolic moments that get the audience going, did that really happen? 
Because if you can't tell what's real and what's not, how can you possibly be expected to solve any in-universe mysteries? In Westworld, you've got a story that bounces around between past and future, plus the insides of computer programs and characters' heads. But it always stays comprehensible, because the show clearly delineates between all these things, even if it throws in the occasional fake-out. The important thing is that it all stays comprehensible and explainable given the rules of this world. For the total opposite, there's Twin Peaks. The show starts off with the murder of Laura Palmer, a grounded and concrete mystery. But along the way, it packs in an untold number of unexplainable, symbolic, surrealist mumbo-jumbo that never gets any direct explanation. This dichotomy ends up pulling the audience in two different directions. Am I supposed to try and figure out what this all has to do with the murder case? Or am I just supposed to vibe and not take it all literally? In all fairness to Twin Peaks, it's doing that on purpose. As frustrating as it can be, this kind of writing can be really great. It's just something that you want to stay away from if your goal is to write a solid mystery. On occasion, I'll cover what I like to think of as non-diegetic mystery boxes that start off grounded and might lead you to believe that the plot is something you can follow before devolving into trippy nonsense. These stories aren't bad, it's just an issue of expectations. You come in thinking it's one thing and you get something else. I just think it's usually best if you pick a lane and stick to it. Also, if everything in the story is going to have an in-universe answer, that means the writers need to be paying attention to all the little details. Otherwise, you end up with mistakes and contradictions. Any mystery writing is built on the assumption that the writer of that mystery thought things through. The audience needs to trust that everything is there for a reason, and that what seems like another mystery isn't just a continuity error. Questions in mystery box stories need to have in-universe answers, so there shouldn't be any mysteries that have the out-of-universe answer of the writer screwed up. Now, let's talk about the most important part of writing one of these things. The answers to the mysteries, revealed at the end. Oh, what's in the box? I want some friggin' answers! Number 8. The ending should answer the questions that the story raised. But not all of them. Yes, obviously, the ending should answer all the big questions and give you a satisfying conclusion. But that doesn't mean it needs to sit down and go over every little thing. That would be 1. Tedious, and 2. A way for the audience to not have to think about anything. Ideally, a mystery box story should give you all the information you need all across the story, and let you put the pieces together yourself. The best mystery box stories require two passes to really get. This is supposed to be a puzzle, right? Let the audience work a little. Inevitably, this will leave a few details that don't have clear explanations, but that's okay. As long as the important plot relevant stuff has answers, it'll still be satisfying. Manifest does this perfectly. As the story goes on, we come to understand that the events of the story were set up by some divine being. We don't ever get to meet this divine being, so we never get an explicit explanation for everything that happened, but it's totally possible to suss out why everything happened the way it did. Some people were unhappy with the finale's lack of direct explanation, but I think if you didn't find the answers, you weren't trying hard enough. On the other hand, The Leftovers leaves most of its biggest plot threads unresolved. So much happens in the show that never gets explained, which is fair. Lack of answers is a major theme of the show, and the theme song literally says, let the mystery be, but it's hard not to be a little disappointed. But it's not enough just to give answers. Those answers have to make sense and feel like they fit. Number 9. The answers to the mysteries have to be planned out in advance. When you write a mystery, any mystery, you have to start out knowing the answer so that you can plant hints throughout the story. That way when the audience learns the answer, they can go, oh that makes sense because of X, Y, and Z. The worst crime you can commit is showing the audience that you are making it up as you went along. This problem has its own TV tropes term. The Chris Carter Effect, named after the creator of The X-Files, an early proto-mystery box that I haven't seen. I keep meaning to, but it's just so long. From my understanding though, The X-Files hinted at a larger mystery in its early seasons, and then just kept going and going, making up new lore every season that was just stapled on after the fact. This is the part that J.J. Abrams always screws up. He thinks the answers don't matter, so he introduces questions without knowing what the answers are. And every time, without fail, when he makes up an answer on the fly later, you can always tell. That's what happened with the Star Wars movies. He introduced the mystery of who Rey's parents were in The Force Awakens, and then in Rise of Skywalker, he had to be like, uh, I don't know, Palpatine. People give Ryan Johnson a flack for trying to make Rey's parents nobodies in The Last Jedi, but Johnson saw the writing on the wall. Abrams put the story in a no-win situation, and Johnson was just doing his best to write them out of a hole. For a better example, the Hollow does a great job of telegraphing its big twist by dropping bigger and bigger hints throughout the first season. I won't spoil it, but more people should watch this show. It's super underrated. 
I should address though, that planning this stuff in advance is not as easy as it sounds, especially with a TV show. TV shows are written season by season, and you never know if it'll get renewed, and things naturally deviate from the script on set as the creative team sees what works and what doesn't. Planning out the entire story arc at the beginning just isn't how TV gets made. Usually, the best you can hope for is that the writers have the general shape of an ending when they start. That can be good enough. If the ending feels satisfying enough where the audience can't tell whether it was planned from the beginning, that's just as good. We've got one more left. The final criteria for a good mystery box story is that it has to be more than just a mystery. These mystery plotlines can get so involved that they take over everything else. It can get to the point where the only thing the show has to offer is the answers to these riddles. But you can't forget about the story part of mystery box story. The mystery has to matter to the story, and it has to matter to the characters. If you want a puzzle and nothing else, there are other places you can get that. We come to fiction for emotional investment. We need to care about the people involved. So a mystery box story should set up its plot so that the characters care about solving the mysteries along with the audience. The answers to the mysteries need to have a tangible effect on the characters' lives. Gravity Falls is particularly good at this. Dipper is an investigator. He spends the whole story trying to uncover secrets. He's frustrated when he can't figure things out, and he gets so excited when he finally cracks a case. That way, we can be invested in our protagonist and solve the puzzles at the same time. When this isn't done, you get something like Cloverfield, where the characters don't interact with the lore at all. They pay brief lip service to the mystery of where the monster came from, but mostly, they care about trying not to die. The mystery and character goals are completely separate. When you set up the story like that, you end up splitting audience investment. This seems obvious, but it can be really easy to slip into storylines that separate character from mystery. When a mystery plotline goes on for this long, you have to ration out your information and reveal things at the proper time. See Criteria 6. That gets pretty hard if your main characters are always trying to find those answers. So a lot of mystery box writers are stuck between contriving ways to keep answers away from the main characters, or just making the characters uncurious. The latter of which can be really frustrating for the audience. We could learn so much about what's going on if the characters would just ask some questions. Yeah, I don't think I can handle any more mystery. And there you have it. The 10 qualities a story should have that make it function as a mystery box story. I've been at this for a long time, and I found a direct correlation between stories that have these elements and stories that tell a satisfying mystery arc. Or at least satisfying to me. There's a good chance that all this is just appealing to my personal taste and that nobody else sees it this way. But let's say you liked what I had to say. You've noticed that you like these kinds of stories, even if you never had a name for it before. Let me recommend to you some shows that do mystery box storytelling better than anyone else. Out of the many shows I've made videos about, so far, the only one to go 10 for 10 with my list is Manifest. Manifest is not a perfect show, but it sure understands how to build intrigue and end in a satisfying way. Then after that, you have to watch Dark. It's easily the most complicated TV show I've ever seen in my life. Be prepared to take notes. Or, you could use the handy website the show put together that lets you put in the episode you're up to and compiles all the information you've been given so far. A Series of Unfortunate Events is a great one, whether it's the books or the show. The show is more successful in telling a coherent mystery, but I still prefer the books for their more rough-around-the-edges feel. And Gravity Falls isn't just one of the best mystery box shows, it's one of my personal favorite things ever. It's basically perfect, and kid or adult, you should watch it. You might be wondering why I care so much about this. Why would I make dozens and dozens of videos talking about this hyper-specific thing? It goes beyond personal curiosity. The reason I talk so much about mystery box stories is, basically, to get the word out. Mystery box story is a genre, and the whole point of genre is to categorize media based on audience expectations. The name of a genre is a label that helps people find media similar to what they've seen and liked before. That's what I want for the term mystery box story. It's still a new concept that only a niche group of people even know about, but it's growing in popularity more and more each year. When I started writing this video, I was pleasantly surprised to find that somebody had made a Wikipedia page for it. If more people know what a mystery box story is, then fans can better articulate what they like about it. And, here's the critical part, more good mystery box stories will get made. With this label, writers can look to past examples to figure out what they should and shouldn't do to please this audience. It's already starting to happen. Most of the best mystery box stories have come about in the past 6 or 7 years. I can feel in my gut that the people who made these looked at shows like Lost and actively considered ways they could improve on the formula. So I'll keep beating this drum for as long as it takes until mystery box stories are broadly recognized as a thing.
In the meantime though, I'll keep finding new and old stories with mystery box elements and breaking down what worked and what didn't. I've got a whole playlist on this, so go check it out. And the next time you come across this kind of writing, send it my way. I'm always on the lookout for more. See you around, and happy puzzle solving. How long have Every you... question I answer will simply lead to another question. You should rest. I don't need sleep. I need answers. I need to determine where in this swamp of unbalanced formulas squatteth the toad of truth. <laughs>